morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi, Eva. Good morning. My co-host is still uh, having breakfast there. Hi, Eva. <laughs> she's still having breakfast, so we will let her finish what she's doing. Okay. Today is August 6th. It's a Tuesday, August 6th, birthday of Italala. But it's already done. It's already done in the Philippines. They had celebrated uh, in her school. Her, um, her students brought her a cake. So they celebrated in the classroom, I suppose, or somewhere there. Okay, well, today is the feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord. Okay, the Transfiguration. Um, which we we meditate on in what mystery of the rosary? Luminous. Huh? Luminous. The luminous mysteries of the rosary. That is mystery number four. four. Very good, Mia. Now let's let's uh, review a little bit. Why why is um, oh you know how the history of it uh, came about uh, towards. Um, Towards the end of the pontificate of John Paul II, right? Pope John Paul II, he gave us that that gift of the um, fourth mystery, the, the yeah, that that whole uh, uh, new way of saying rosary by contemplating on the luminous mysteries, the lum the mysteries of light. So you know how the uh, the other mysteries of the rosary, the joyful mysteries, talks about what? What do we meditate on and contemplate on the, about the life of Jesus and the joyful mysteries? Huh? From his birth, right? The annunciation of his birth, his birth, and coronation. all the way to oh, coronation. Joyful. Yeah, not, not find it. Huh? Up to the time he was found in the temple. So it was during his early life, right? His hidden life. That's the segment of his life that's called the hidden life of our Lord when he was born all the way to his boyhood. And then you have the sorrowful mysteries where we contemplate the, the passion and death of our Lord, right? And then you have the glorious, which is the, res the, the resurrection all the way to our Lady's coronation. Now, uh, Pope John Paul II um, um, Rightfully, I'd like to think, you know, thought, well, we should add there in order to complete the, the, the whole meditation on the life of Jesus to add the public ministry part. Okay? The part where um, Jesus was already proclaiming to the world that the kingdom of heaven is at hand and that he was the light of the world. See, light, light of the world, luminous, mysteries of light, luminous mysteries. There's where it came from, <clears throat> right? So the luminous mysteries celebrate and help us commemorate and meditate and contemplate on the uh, mysteries of the public life of our Lord, right? Beginning from... His baptism, which was like the initiation of his public life when he came out okay, to John the Baptist. And then you have, what's the second mystery? Luminous mystery, huh? The waiting at Cana, which is his first miracle, right? Then, third mystery is? Proclamation of the kingdom of God. Fourth is? This transfiguration. And then the fifth is? The institution of the Holy Eucharist. Okay. <clears throat> so let's talk about the, today's feast, Transfiguration. What happened here? <clears throat> this is from St. Luke. The account is from St. Luke, chapter 9. When our Lord took his three uh, sidekicks, <laughs> right? Peter, James, and John. Okay. He took only the three of them up the mountain. And he got transfigured. So, what do we understand by transfigured? He had a 
Huh? Trans means? Transformation. Transformation or change. Figure means the way he looked, the way he appeared, the way he presented himself, right? And what kind of change happened in the mountain? So our Lord was there praying and all of a sudden, his image changed, right? He became radiant as the sun. He became glorious in appearance. He showed these three apostles uh, his radiant glory. And then while he was there, two figures appeared with him, right? Who were those two figures that appeared with him uh, in that mountain? Moses and Elijah. Why Moses and Elijah? What is the significance of Moses and Elijah appearing to him? The law and the prophet. Okay, Kobe, very good. See, Moses is, is known as the lawgiver. So he was the one who uh, represented all the, you know, the, the, the giving of the commandments and the laws and how it was passed on to, the, to us from the Jewish people to us. And then Elijah was the representative of the prophets. The prophets who announced all throughout history the coming of the Messiah. Now what is the significance of these two as far as Jesus was concerned and as far as the apostles witnessing all of these? Okay? The significance is, remember how our Lord said he did not come to destroy the law and the prophets. Rather, he came to fulfill the law and the prophets. Okay? So he came to fulfill. So he, he is the light of the world to fulfill, to bring the promise of the law and the prophets into fruition. He came in order to precisely um, institutionalize okay, the laws that Moses had, had received and given to the Jewish people. And he came to fulfill what the prophets have been saying all along, that there's going to be a Messiah. Okay? There's going to be a Messiah, and this is uh, he. Okay? This is Jesus Christ. He was a Messiah. So Jesus came to fulfill that. And he wanted his apostles to have that kind of a confirmation that all of that was true. And besides, um, if we put it in, in its uh, historical context, okay, um, the transfiguration came just shortly before the crucifixion and death of our Lord. Okay? Why was that? Because our Lord wanted to show the apostles His glory before the gory uh, crucifixion would happen. Okay? So from glory to glory. Right? Our Lord wanted to confirm to the apostles, yes, I'm going to die. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to redeem mankind by a bloody death. But in order to prove to you that I am God and that all of the things that are going to happen are going to pass and there will be a resurrection... I want to give you a preview already of what is to come. The glory that is to come okay? after my death and crucifixion on the cross. And that was that kind of glory. The, 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 uh, the, uh, the transfiguration was, the, was a prefiguring sort of of the resurrection. Okay? And to show us uh, his real, his divinity, his side of his divinity. Not only his mortality, but the side of his divinity. <clears throat> okay. So Jesus allowed his three apostles to witness. To witness that in order to confirm his divinity. <clears throat> and that way also, you know, uh, um, um, it confirms, right? It confirms that he is God. Um, it gives us further proof that... Uh, the confusion that his neighbors had just a few days ago, and we were reading it in the scripture, right? In the gospel, the, the, his neighbors were asking, who is this guy? He was just one of us. Where did he get all this learning? And where did he get all this power to, to do miracles? Well, isn't he the carpenter's son? Isn't he the son of Mary? Aren't his brothers and sisters, his cousins, his relatives all known to us? Where did he get all of this? Right? 
That was just a few days ago. So now Jesus confirms more and more through the Feast of the Transfiguration that, well, yes, He is God. That, this, that on one side you saw His humanity. He was just among His neighbors, very ordinary kind of a person. And now you see His divinity. Right? What it means uh, to be God. What it means to be God. Now, um, and then historically, as we were saying, Jesus allowed this thing to happen, allowed his apostles to witness this just before his crucifixion. Okay? In order to strengthen the faith of the apostles, in order to confirm in them that, look, some bad things are going to happen. They're going to come, that's for sure. But I want to confirm you in your faith. I want to assure you that I am God. That I may die, I'm going to suffer, but I'm going to resurrect and I'm going to be restored in glory. Right? That that is what's going to happen. So I'm giving you a preview of it already. Now, you know, nowadays uh, it's very consoling. The, trans, the Feast of the Transfiguration is for us a very consoling uh, uh, reality and event to to keep in mind okay? to keep in mind the divinity of Jesus Christ to keep in mind that that God is amongst us in the world the way that he was among the apostles in that mountain that he showed his divinity and in with us God has shown his divinity his providence his guidance his being God in our lives Many more times than we can count. Now, I want us to keep this very much in mind, especially in times of difficulty, in times of challenges, when we find it difficult to do the things that we would normally do every day. When, when, when uh, some bad things may, may, may happen to us uh, in our family life or in our personal life, or uh, we tend to be uh, discouraged with our struggles, let us remember that all of these things will pass and that there is God. That God is, is, is always looking over us. That God is always there to provide us what's good for us. Okay? Let us not lose sight of the fact that while we are living on earth with all of the challenges that we have, that there is a God we have to look up to. There is a God who is our hope. There is a God who is going to be our reward after all of the challenges and difficulties in life that we encounter here on earth. Okay? So these kinds of feasts, like the feast of today, give us that kind of hope and that aspiration okay? to recognize the divinity of Jesus Christ. Okay? Oh boy, we got a very hungry baby here. Hey Ava, say hi. <laughs> she just... Okay, everybody, that's it for us. We're going off to Mass. Oops, we're a little late. Okay, bye-bye. Have a good day.